These are images of the summer of 1914 when the First World War broke out. In many countries among which Germany, there was a widespread atmosphere of euphoria. This was certainly not the case in 1939. So how did ordinary Germans react to the outbreak of war? What was their perspective on the fact that their country invaded Poland and that Britain and France declared war on them? Stay tuned. Hey, welcome back regular viewers. If you happen to be new, my name is Stefan. I'm a history teacher from the Netherlands. I'm Dutch and I'm hustling history for you. And if you like that, well then consider subscribing and also hit that notification bell. Big disclaimer, I'm explaining the outbreak of the Second World War from the German point of view. I'm explaining it and not whitewashing it. Bear in mind that many Germans had false assumptions on the outbreak of war. Don't wait for me. There is no more leave. I've got to go straight to the barracks and load vehicles. It's the mobilization alarm. A young German wrote near the end of August 1939. Germany officially mobilized on the 26th of August 1939. The atmosphere was serious and determined. Many believed that it would not come to war. Many believed and hoped that war would be avoided just like it had done the previous year in 1938 when the Sudeten crisis occurred. This led to the Munich conference where Sudetenland was annexed by Germany. However, later the remaining Czech part was taken. Slovakia became a German puppet state. As for Poland, the German government complained about the alleged mistreatment of ethnic Germans that were living inside Poland and the neutral free city of Danzig was the main center of attention. The free city of Danzig was created in 1920. It included the port city of Danzig as well as surrounding area including some villages and settlements. The free city was under League of Nations protection and put into a binding customs union with Poland. Poland decided what went in and out the port and it was Poland that could set the terrorists. The Poles on their turn set up a port at Gdynia and stationed a military garrison at Westerplatte. With Hitler's rise to power in Germany, the local Nazi party gained massive support and in 1933 they gained power in the Volkstag, the Danziger parliament, and in the following years the democracy was abolished. On August 30th, the German foreign minister Joachim von Ribbentrop informed the British ambassador about Hitler's demands concerning the Polish corridor. He did this very late and by the time the British ambassador was sent off to London, he didn't receive a written copy of the demands. The Polish ambassador and the Polish government didn't receive anything at all. Hitler's demands were that plebiscites were to be held in the territories of the Polish Corridor as well as the Western territories that previously belonged to the German Empire. But Hitler, he actually wanted action against Poland and many Germans believed in this as well, especially because like I just mentioned, many Western territories had previously belonged to Germany and were allocated to Poland after the First World War. Do notice that not only fanatical Nazis wanted action against Poland, many Germans believed that this was the right thing to do. After all, many territories of Western Poland had previously belonged to Germany, the German Empire, and had also a German minority living in it. This was all the result of the Treaty of Versailles that was imposed on the Germans without any room for negotiation. Hitler had succeeded in portraying himself as the champion of an injured and besieged German minority, mobilizing reservoirs of resentment at the loss of territories in the post-1918 settlement. Hitler had managed to create and increase anti-Polish and anti-British sentiments among former social democrats and conservatives. Now their parties were outlawed by the Nazis but Hitler managed to harness their support. Anti-Polish sentiments already lingered since the end of the First World War 
because of the territories that were allocated to the Second Polish Republic, as well of the already existing anti-Slavic sentiments among Germans. Anti-British sentiments had also lingered since the First World War because the British had imposed a food blockade on the Germans during the First World War and maintained this blockade after the armistice. In short, many Germans believed action against Poland was necessary. On August 15th, German military commanders were ordered to prepare for the invasion of Poland. On August 22nd, Hitler briefed the top brass. It was also the day that Ribbentrop flew to Moscow to sign the non-aggression pact with Stalin, which removed the threat of a two-front war, considering the fact that Poland would be beaten quickly. Preparations to defeat France and Britain weren't finished, but Poland would be taken down in a short campaign. On the 31st of August 1939, the German radio declared Hitler 16-point proposal to solve the crisis. It was issued to show the German people that its leaders had done everything to avoid war. But Hitler, he was ready for war. On September 1st, 1939, Hitler announced on the radio that the Germans had returned fire to Polish soldiers who had fired on their territory first. Fake evidence of the Polish provocation was provided by the SS. Border incidents were manufactured to prove that the Polish had invaded the German territory and started aggression first. This happened at the Kalajewicz station. Now this was all very flimsy. The international community wasn't having it and even uh, Wehrmacht war crimes investigators who were sent to the scene shortly after, even they didn't found the evidence convincing. I know there's more to this subject but that's beyond the scope of this video because this video really focuses on the German perspective. What were ordinary Germans thinking of this? Well, a German teacher, he wrote a letter to his son. Now the die is cast. The terrible uncertainty is over. We know what we face. In the east, the storm is rising. The Führer's proposals were acceptable, modest and would serve to preserve the peace. This man drew parallels with the summer of 1914, which he had also witnessed since he was a World War I veteran and he believed that once again Germany was encircled. Now this man was a pro-Nazi, so let's take a look at the thoughts of an anti-Nazi. He had a Jewish wife and he was horrified by the pogrom the previous year, the Reichskristallnacht, and he feared that war would bring harm to the Jews. He was very right. But you know what? He also believed that action against Poland was needed. A link through the Polish corridor was needed. Nevertheless, on the 1st of September there were no patriotic marches like there were in 1914. The streets remained quiet, reservists they reported themselves and civilians they remained businesslike and subdued. And why wasn't there an atmosphere of euphoria? Were the Germans afraid that they would be beaten by the Polish military? Well, no, they knew they could take Poland, so victory was for the taken. So why was there no euphoria? See where the euphoria in 1914 turned out to be totally overconfident and misplaced, now victory seemed to be imminent. So why wasn't there a patriotic mood? This has two reasons, one lies in the future, the other in the past. The Germans, they were generally in fear of what would happen next. Not necessarily they were in fear of the possible resistance of the Polish army, I mean they could take on the Polish, but what about the British? See, what would Britain do? Britain as well as France, they had guaranteed Polish sovereignty. In other words, if Germany would attack Poland, Britain and France would declare war on Germany. What would Britain do now? Would Britain live up to its promise to declare war on Germany once the Germans had attacked the country or not? Because previous year the British they backed down with the conference of Munich believing peace was saved. Perhaps another settlement could be arranged. And if Britain would declare war on Germany, another great war-like scenario would develop with countless off-casualties. 
And this brings us to the second reason with lies in the past. The collective memory of the First World War. Enormous high casualties, a food blockade, a humiliating treaty afterwards. You surely did not want this to happen again. But guess what? War did happen again. Because Britain declared war on Germany on the 3rd of September. France did so later that day. This date would enter the German calendars as the start of the war. The 1st of September was seen as a counterattack on Poland. Many Germans believed that the invasion of Poland was justified, but few believed it was worth war with Britain and France. But at the end, many concluded that the British would have it so. They were indicting the British for not just failing to force Poland to accept Germany's reasonable terms, but also for maintaining the encirclement, which aimed to keep their nation in its post-1918 thrall. As Germans' close ranks, they convinced themselves that the war had been forced upon them. Germany was encircled in 1914. Germany was again encircled in 1939. And Germany had to wage war for its own survival. At least, that is what many Germans back then believed. Thanks to my patrons you see on screen and a special thanks to Joan, Peter King, Tanya Dixie, Henry Clarkson, Rob Park, RL. When we go all the way to the end of the Second World War, Germany was indeed desperately fighting for survival bordering on fatalism. I did make an in-depth episode of why the Germans kept fighting the Second World War in its last years. If you want to know more about that, you click right here. Thank you so much for watching. Do not forget to subscribe and I'll see you later.